о идолах. О! О! О, Гидан, I'm happy. There you go. Вау, вау, вау. Hi, Yaakov. Good morning, good morning. All right, all right. <clears throat> I think this works. Good morning. With the help of Hashem, we are learning today's three Prakim Rambam, Hilchis Brachis, Prakim Zayin Ches. And Tess, starting with Patek Zion. Patek Zion deals with the customs, with Minhagim that are practiced during the meal for Derecheretz. Because this is considered mannered behavior, which is very important because things that are coming from uh, Derecheretz are going to be certain behaviors which with time could change. The ideas are eternal, the actual expression of them, as we'll see, some of these things are not shayach because we don't sit on carpets, we sit on chairs, etc., etc. Pedic Shvi has 15 halachas, and we are starting with halacha aleph, says the Rambam. That there are many types of customs that are practiced during the meal, and vikulam derecheretz, they are all included in the realm of mannered behavior, which will be the topic of this chapter. The Elohim, starting with number one. Kishen achnasim l'su'udam. When people enter to have a meal, ha-gadol she-bikulam noyte l'asyot of t'chilah, who was offered to wash for the bread first, the one who was considered the gadol, the greatest of the group, and v'achar kach nechnasim v'yoshvim l'su'bim, and then everyone sits down, and the gadol mesev b'roish, the gadol is going to be sitting at the head of that table or that circle, and v'sheni lo yilimata himenu, and the other one is going to be sitting, so to say, the head of the second one is going to be near the feet of the first one. They did not sit on chairs. The goal would be is that when the first one wants to have a conversation with the second one, he should not have to get up should be convenient for the gadol to converse with the sheni. Now, hoya shalosh mitois. So there, the gadol will be what we consider the head of the table, but the sheni loy will be in the opposite place, will be above him, which means it won't be that easy for him to converse with the sheni loy. The shlishi will be lamato himeno, and they found this to be of the greatest derecheretz for the one who was in the middle. And Bachal, we had something similar um, by Hilchas Deya, so we had this in the Gemara, that when you walk, how you, th- there's the one Miyaminoid, there's one Mismailoi, and the greater should be Miyaminoid, the other one should be Mismailoi. So this is the, the, the most uh, uh, mannered way of sitting. Halacha 2. Balabayis Mavarech Hamoitzi. The Balabayis, if there's only one Balabay, should be the one saying Hamoitzi. Umashlim Habracha. First, he should finish the Bracha. And then he should break the bread. In words, as we will see that it is ideal to make the bracha over a wholesome piece of bread. On Shabbos too, even in the week, if you have an option one. So not don't rush. First finish the bracha, then break the bread. And in contract with me, in contrast with making of Amoitzi, who should be making the mezuman and then benching should be a guest dafka because, as we spoke out, that in those days only one person said the benching. And since there is a bracha that's given by a guest for the balabayis, if the balabayis is going to be making bircha samazen, he won't be receiving that bracha. Now what happens if you kulam balabayis? Like when we eat here in the shul, everyone is the balabas. Or if you, you know, you're eating in a, in, a, in a group, 
your Pesach program, everyone is the Balabas, then Hagadol Shabahem Boitseya, Vuhum of Arach Birchas Hamazin, the same one who's going to be making Hamoitzi. It's interesting that Amam doesn't write that Hagadol Mehem is going to be washing first, which is also what he wrote over here, but Azoyedus. Okay, Halachi Gimel. Ein we want first for everyone to have in front of them salt or lift on relishes. People then Bechlal did not eat bread, just bread. They always ate bread with bread, even with salt, bread with a relish. So everything should be there. The word pas here, Gidon, doesn't mean a lot of bread. It means unless people are planning to eat bread the way we eat bread. I eat bread. I don't eat bread dipped in anything. I don't have to do that. So if you're planning to eat bread stam, then you can make hamoitzi because everyone is going to get a piece of bread. But if you're planning to eat bread with the relish, first have the relish near the people and then begin by making the brach. The enoi boitzeya, when the person is breaking the bread, he doesn't break it not into a very small piece. It's going to look like he's very stingy. Not a very large piece. What's, what's the definition of large? He's going to look like a glutton. However, that's only during the week where there's no mitzvah to eat. Because that's for the mitzvah of eating on Shabbos. You only break the bread in the place, in the loaf of bread, that it is thoroughly baked. Another example, that's derecheretz. In other words, it's not shayach today because today it's all the same. At different ovens, then it wasn't uh, much, much. I'm not saying it's all the same. The challah that I always eat is always the same. Okay, halacha dalat. Mitzvah min amufchar, levtsoya kikar shleimo. Better always on something that's wholesome. The im hoysa sham shleimo shal soidim. What happens if you have a shleimo made out of barley? Barley is considered inferior grain. And you have a prusa piece, a part of a bread, but it's made out of chitim. So what, which one will trump the other? Is it Shlema? Is it Chitim? Both. Maniach Shlema Betoycha Prusa. Simple solution. Whenever you can do both, you do both. Ubeitzea Mishteyam. Kedei Sheyivtza. Both from the Chitim and from the Shlema. Beshabasis Ube Yomem Toivim. Chayiv Letzoya Shtei Kikodis. You're Chayiv to break bread while you have in front of you two whole loaves of bread. And actually Noitel Shteyen Biyadoi. The Rebbe points out that in Hilchah Shabbos, the Rambam apparently is saying the same thing. The Rambam repeats over there that in every su'udah of the three su'udahs, the Rambam writes, you should have two kikarais. The Rebbe explains that whenever the Rambam repeats a halacha, that the Rebbe has the sheet to always, it's because there are two dinim in having shleimus. One of them is connected to Hilchah Shabbos. It's a din in su'udah Shabbos, that what makes Su'udah Shabbos unique is that the bread is going to be double, Lecha Mishnah. And then here we're learning about a din in the Dine Betziah Sapas. That you have to be Boitzeya over a Shalim. On Shabbos, the definition of Shleimus is not one, is two. That's a din in Betziah Sapas. And there are big, many nafkeminas, whether it's a din in Su'udah Shabbos, like din in Su'udah Shabbos should only demand it on the three Su'udahs. Or is it a din in the Betziah Sapas? And let's go back. Allah hey. Ha Boitzeya. Yeah. What mitzvah are you talking about? Uh, more beautiful. To beautify the mitzvah of, of having a su'uda. Of having a su'uda. It's like Shabbos mitzvah. Shabbos inyantiv? Shabbos inyantiv. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. When you're making a mitzvah, making a brach. So, bechas uh, anahenen. Mitzvah of the, of the bracha. A bracha should be made on something beautiful. There's an idea of a, a regular hamoyti that you should have a whole of a bracha. That's, like that's what the Ramam is writing. Befetish. And by the way, it's not only by bread. What about by, when it comes to fruits? If you have a cut grape and a full grape, you're always going to, if you have an option, always take that which is uncut. Mm-hmm. The one who breaks the bread should be putting the bread. Lifne means gidon, not in the hand of. That's very important for the Ramah. In front of. In fr- and the other one takes it. If you saw that. The Ramah holds you only put bread in someone's hands if they are an oval. So it's a sign of avelus. The ain't about saying noisin biyato oichel. Elam ken or your oval. So in other words, you put it in front of him. Now another thing. The one who broke the bread, which is the one who made the bracha, should be eating first. Many people feel that, you know what that is? It doesn't look nice that you're eating and everyone is waiting. 
That's mm-hmm. Das Balabat, in which here is Hepach Das Toira. So, you know, they first shear a piece of bread with everyone, and then they eat. That's not the right thing to do. Now, Al Pi Kabbalah, it's much more than Al Pi Halacha. The Ramam gives leeway. Al Pi Kabbalah, the Zoyer says that if anyone ate bread prior to the one who broke the bread ate, there's no bracha on their food. In other words, your eating of the bread is not a, is a ingen ruchni. But the Rambam speaks about it like, and therefore he allows, he allows for exceptions. Everyone has to wait for him first to eat. So another thing, the one who's the Baitseya who has to eat first, he has to wait for at least the majority of the people to finish saying Amin. However, the Rambam allows for an exception. So we say the Hamaitzi should be made by the Balabayas. So it could be you have your Rebbe sitting with you. You're going to be making the bracha because that's on the balabais. But you want for your Rebbe to eat first. Or that's okay. I'll pee dinim of the recheretz. The yanichenu lifshait yodi koidim loy. He wants for the Rebbe to eat first. That's again harushus biyodi. That's I'll pee halacha. I'll pee the recheretz. You're going to pee kabbalah. There should be no exceptions. You have to eat the bread first for the benefit of all that are there. Halacha vav. Shnayim mamtinim Here we are speaking about two people actually eating out of the same plate, and not when they begin to eat. They are in the middle of eating, and there is a person that stopped. They needed to go to the restroom. So the eating out of the same plate, when one stops, the other one should wait. That's that acheretz. But shloisha, if three people are eating out of the same dish, then there's no more need, one, there's no yin of that acheret, because then it's like mamash a communal plate. Two people, it's a bit more intimate. If one stops, the other one should stop. Gomru mehen shnayim. Then, hashlishi mafsik imon. Before we were speaking about it, he went to the restroom. Now we're speaking about three people that are eating together, and two of them finished eating the meal. So the third one should stop also. That acheret. But gomat echon mehem. Another rule. Don't converse during eating. Which the sakana is, as we know, that the food might go down the windpipe instead of going down the esophagus and a person might have a difficulty breathing. As we already mentioned before, if wine is brought, normally one person could make a bracha for all. Not by a bracha that's being made during the meal, because if I make the bracha and you will have to listen, you'll have to answer Amin. You don't have to answer Amin, but it's important to answer Amin. And you might be in the middle of eating. Like this, you get to choose when you stop swallowing, when there's no more food in your mouth, you swallow, that's when you'll make the bracha. Punkt when they're swallowing, because they didn't decide when the bracha is being made. Don't look at someone's uh, face while they are eating and don't look at someone's plate while they are eating. It makes them feel uncomfortable. It makes them ashamed. Okay. You know, if you converse with people, then it's even harder. You know, I think that's the say that. As if you would be allowed to talk to people, it would be almost impossible to talk to a person. Don't look at them. That's a simon, there's something unhealthy with you, with a talker. Don't talk, and therefore don't look, don't look at the person, don't look at his plate. Halach is Zayin. Hashamish, the waiter, Sho'oymid lifnei ha-mesubin. Again, that a cheretz is, is that Einoi oichel iman. Also makes sense, because, first of all, you're not sitting down. That I'm, you should sit when you eat. That we learned in the Chazdeis, I think. And also, you can't talk. You're talking to the waiter. The waiter's going to be eating, he'll have to respond to you. You're not supposed to look at the face of someone who's eating. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a hemshech over here. However, but it's again in the you mamish put it in his mouth. He put it in his mouth food like he's he's looking at all the food. Now the im the son. And if, and if, and if you're going to give the waiter wine, you're going to know, since in principle he doesn't eat anything. He's only, being, he's only going to eat that which you are serving him. So if you're going to give him wine, for which he makes a bracha, normally if I make a bracha, it covers that same bracha type of everything else that will be consumed during that meal. Because I have in mind that this is to cover everything. Since the Shamash in principle should not eat or drink anything, so every time they give him wine, he has to make another bracha. 
If someone needed to go out to urinate, so the din is, you don't have to wash both their hands when they come back. Because we assume, on one hand, that you know, he needed to touch himself, or he touched it, or some urine got, but it only got on one hand. Obviously, uh, just to know, this is dafka lahashed in mind. Because again, the presumption is that if someone goes to defecate, then both of their hands got physically soiled to a certain degree, and therefore they both have to be washed. Like if a person spoke with his friend, he went out, but while he, while he was outside, he found a chavr, and he had a long talk with him. So that's another rule, that while a person is engaged in something else, you die maskani yoseim, and people are not mindful where their hands went. Now, what does vehiflik mean? That Amam here doesn't define, but it's a long shmuz, then you have to do it until you die again. Another thing. And In other words, if a person is coming back and all they're going to be doing is going to be drinking. So, in the times of Chazal, guys, when people would drink wine, you know what they would do? We would call this a farbaisen. No, it's, they wanted to drink a lot of wine. What helps a person drink a lot of wine is every now and then eating a little bit of bread. So if a person feels, I left. Why should I have to do Nithil Siddhaim again? Now we're only drinking. D- wash again. Because that was the de- because people are going to be eating a little bit of bread. Vachakach machzid Now you're going to be washing your hands. Wash your hands while you're not facing them and then face them. Vilama noitil bimakaimai. No, it's, if it's not, you're not going to wash in the circle of the eating. So why do you have to wash over there? Because people will be chayshed you, you didn't wash your hands. Because it's a drinking, people are drinking wine. And again, like we mentioned, even though taka, people were then drinking wine, but since it was common for every now and then, you're hopping a little nibble of bread, you have to be noitl, you want everyone to see you doing the tila sidaim, but don't do the tila sidaim. Imagine if you're sitting around the table, on the table. A person is very old, they can't walk. Sometimes you bring a shisel. Even there, if you can turn to the side, that's darecheres. Halacha 9. Halacha tes. Ein manichin basen chai alapas. Don't uh, uh, pass, or don't place, I'm sorry, don't place raw meat on bread. Raw meat, if some of it will drip into the bread, it's going to make the bread moos. It's raw, raw juice. And similarly, if you have a cup full with liquid, don't pass it over the bread because some of it can fall out of the cup if it's full and it's going to pour on the bread and it's going to ruin the bread. It's going to make the bread most repulsive. If you have a plate and the plate is not straight, so you want to straighten it out, so you want to put something under it, don't use bread. Um, to, to put because, oh, there also, Shema Yeshafeich, Something of the plate will spill on the bread. The ain't zarkin as don't throw bread. That's called bizoyin oichlin. That's not because it's going to become repulsive, because as will certain other derecheret stick ways we behave with food. Veloyes achatichos. Don't. Achatichos does not refer to bread, my friends. Achatichos means don't throw pieces of food. You have a piece of meat, you have a piece of fish, it's a chash of a piece, don't throw it. Veloyes oichlin she'elem klip and norsha, you throw foods that don't have shells like tusim and anavim, like berries and like grapes, or like teinim or like figs, because since they are soft, when you throw them, they're going to land, they might, you know, they might become a little bit crushed and they'll become repulsive. They'll become repugnant because they're soft. The minig was that when you had a fancy <laughs> gathering like by a wedding, they would, have these, um, they would have these pipes that would go through uh, different, uh, you know, different things and wine would pour out and wine would pour in. There would be this whole circulation of wine that's not considered a bazoin because the, the item is not, gonna, not getting ruined. People are not touching it. You can drink from it afterwards. That's okay. The Zarkin Lifname, you are allowed to throw uh, to, you know, to add to the Simcha, Kloyois, the Egoizim, you know, roasted grains and nuts, even though they might fall on the floor, they're not soft. So they're not going to become uh, repulsive by landing hard. They're not going to get crushed. However, if it's during the winter and the floor is muddy, then they're going to get ruined if they fall on the floor. They're going to fall on the floor. But during the Chama, during the summer, they're not going to get dirtied. 
It's like nowadays, it's okay, by a chasm we throw candies, it's a mini Yisrael, in Shulchan Aruch twice, right? by a bar mitzvah boy, and by a oifruf. Throw a candy, that's it. It's, in other words, there's bizoin oichoyelin. On the other hand, you're adding to the joy. Today the candies are wrapped. You're not, uh, you're, go ahead. Well, I'm not worried about it hurting the person <laughs> throwing it at the Ramam, that's, 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 that's no, this is Derech Heretz, he's speaking about Hilchaz Nezikin. That's something else, the Hilchaz Nezikin we'll learn later. <laughs> it's terrible. They never, the Ramam never, never had in his thought this idea that people, it became as um, Shtuyot. They throw the Koyach. By my Oifruf, I Mamash got hurt. Someone who had a very good aim, and it's in front of the Rebbe. Terrible. Like, mamish, I had tzad, and this time I got swollen. It hit me right, I remember where it hit me. Big peckle. Bar Hashem, Aguta Kapara. Ve'e noitlin yadeim bayain. Don't wash your hands with wine. See, that's already called uh, bizoyim. Whether the wine is still uh, unwatered down, they were unable to drink the wine, was very concentrated then, or whether it's watered down. Ve'chein e'en mafsidin sha'ar yicholun omashken derech bizoyu be'itu. You can't ruin it in a way of bizoyim. That's, called, that's a concept of bizui oichlin. In other words, your, it, it, food is, is mamash a manifestation of God's kindness. And imagine someone, someone, when someone does something kind to you, and your reaction is, is very disrespectful. You're disrespecting the person, and you're disrespecting kindness. Don't do that. Halachayut. Asur la'archim little klum mimash alafneim. Wow. No one around the table is allowed to take from the food that was served to them, and to give it to the son or the daughter of the host. You know, it's many people felt that's a gesture of kindness, but listen to what happened. Many people were poor. The type of abundance that we have was not shayach to most people then. Could be you, Cheshman, you the Balabas, you have exactly enough food for three guests and for your kids. Now, if the guest is going to give from the portion you gave to the guest to your son, he meant well, but then you'll have to give him more food. You don't have more food to give him. You already Cheshman out how, how, how many potatoes everyone is going to get. Like in the yeshiva when I was there. No, well, the kids were going to get a little bit. Now your kids will get more, but you're going to be ashamed. Even to one's kid, you can tell your kid, we don't have food now. You won't be that ashamed. It's, it's heartbreaking. You're not ashamed. To a, to a guest, you're ashamed. All he had is what he decided. And if the guest is going to give to the katanim, so the katanim are going to get more than what was allocated for them. But the problem is, is that you, the Balabas, won't have more food to give to the Oireh. Okay. Another din. Lo yishlach adam lechaveri chav yisayin v'shem and saf al piyad. These are mamas, we're going to hilchas darecheretz. Oil is unique that it floats on top of everything. If I'm sending you a barrel of wine, and I put oil on top of it, now I mean well, because I'm really gifting you wine and a little bit of oil. They don't mix. I'm not allowed to do that. Even though I told you it's a barrel of of wine. I'll tell you why. Because you might not remember it. You might think, you know what you have? You have a barrel of oil. And therefore, you might invite people, based on your assumption, you have a whole barrel of oil, and then when you take off the top layer, you don't have any oil. You'll get ashamed. And the shaman, who shall panel that when really oil is only floating on the top. You might invite guests. You'll invite, you'll invite guests on the presumption you have enough oil for the meal. And then you'll forget, oh, you go out, it's really only wine. And you'll get ashamed. I think we learned that the oil used to be a lot more expensive in terms of the Gemara. So there you go. So in other words... It's like you have the good stuff, but actually... It's actually we've got it. Very nice. So that is, that is reminding us that in many places, oil was a lot more expensive than the wine. So it's even worse. In other words, you don't know, you're like... It's, it's fake, it's fake news. You think you have a whole barrel of something more expensive when really you have a barrel of something that's less expensive. Anything that could lead to a bush. And this is about, listen, we're never allowed to shame anyone, but this is specifically when you're hosting, then you're very vulnerable of becoming ashamed when you don't have this, you don't have that. Uh, okay, okay, I'm saying all this that are because today people won't be that ashamed, I think, in this area. So we don't have oil. It was uh, different then. Uh, this, uh, this clearly is only for the way they ate then. When they ate then, they would, like the Ramam, they reclined on the floor. And they would, everyone would have a little, uh, what's called a, a TV table, I forgot what it's called, these little uh, tishalach. TV dinner. But the table. Like, 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 yeah. No, much like the one that is done. Huh? 
tree. That's it, a TV tree. Huh. And, the, and, and what happened is, is that there were very little. So just know when people ate, there was a lot of flow over on the ground. Much more than today. I know that today some crumbs fall on the, under the table, but it was much worse because you had a little tishala. You're laying down. So you, they used to remove the table and they would sweep up the area. This is all before benching. They would remove this little, every, everyone's individual little table. And and they would sweep the, the, the place. That's not a, it should be clean. This is not shayich today. Today it's clean. We're not saying the fact, of course, there's some crumbs on the bottom, or maybe you can say that if you have a lot of kids, very young infants around the table, then it's more bachavadik prior to benching to clean up the area. That's, that will be the darachet for today. And vacharkach, then you wash your neikin yadeim, like we learned yesterday, that's my machroinim. Why? Because shema yishayru shampirurim sheishmam kazayis, maybe pieces of bread in the size of a kazayis or larger will be there, and sha'asur lahalech bahem. You're not allowed to walk in it, you're not allowed to throw water on it. I'll tell you something, yeah. Dricha, we learned in Gemara that stepping on bread is a, is a, got kashalanios. It can make a person poor. Avol pirurim sheimem kazayis, dear mutam la'abdom biyad. By the way, mutam la'abdam bayad in a respectful way. La'abdam bayad means you can gather them and throw them in the garbage. So we learned that in the Gemara. Even little pieces of bread, don't be noyig a, a minig of bizoyin, even on the smallest amount of bread. Halacha yud beis. If you let maim lenatila, once maim achreinim was brought, so the rule is, kol shemavarach berchas hamazayin, the one who's going to lead the benching, kuno et liyad of tchilo. Everyone has this, they know that, 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 that there's, no, there's no kibud by maim achreinim. You're right. But not regarding the one who's benching. The one who's benching should wash first. And by the way, it's interesting that Amam wrote that benching is going to be done by the Oireach. But still, here he writes across the board, we don't want the Gadol or the bencher to wait. And now, the other people, and then there's no say that everyone has to wash, but the Eimach have them the because she'ein machabdin biyadayim mizoy homois. In other words, that's a rule. If it's because, don't forget, my machreinim. It's because your hands are dirty with the melech sodaimus. When it comes to cleaning from dirt, it's not like the maim rishonim. It's already you're bringing kedusha. You're taking away tumantara. You don't have to be machabed. And if you're machabed, you didn't really do. That's not called giving an honor. And nor bakshadim when you're working over a bridge. Like who should walk over first? Many bridges were so narrow. Either you go or I go. There is you don't know, to say that uh, there's a seder of kibbut, or when it comes to the roads, where is it important for you to make a, a distinction between the greater one who should be honored only when you are going through a doorway, but not any doorway, a doorway that's roi la mezuzah b'sha'as knisa. I want to make a reward roi la mezuzah, the Ramam is, is being maramas, he's not speaking about your only mechabed, I saw that between two great people, them going back and forth for a long time. No, great, great people. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan, of blessed memory, and uh, the Sheva Talevi. I uh, won't forget that. And they're having uh, H1 is telling the other one to go. You go and you go. And there was an older Bachrim are trying to hear what they're talking about a long time. The word Roy La Mezuzah means even if they're going into a Pesach of a Beisach Nessus. So there isn't a Mezuzah. It's exempt because it's a Kodesh, not a Choyl area. If it's a doorway, that's where it is. It's Shaykh the of Kibbut. Halacha Yud Gimel. Gomro Little Yudayim. Uh, and once people finished washing my machreinim, the nagvu yedeim, like we learned yesterday, they have to dry their hands. Uber chobir chasamazin. So chaver, you know what used to happen? Aside of the wine that he's going to mention, it's ideal to bench over wine. They would bring. This is during the week where there's certain materials that you would burn, and it would create a perfumed scent, and people would smell it. So he says that they would bring. That's called mugmar, an incense burner, and they would burn incense. So the rule is, By the way, we're going to see the, the bracha on the mugmar was made after the bracha for the yain, after the, after. he's not going into that seder. He's just giving about the kibbut. You let the benching, you're going to be the one making the bracha for the incense. Now let's go through the order. If there is wine, wine to bench over, so that will be the seder. Meviyim kois, which has to be at least machzik revius or yesed al revius, and they bring the psamim. When you make the benching, you're mavarach ala kois, which means, as we know, that the one who's leading the benching holds the cup, but they had mugmar. So now the question is, Gidon, which hand is used for what? So the wine is in the right hand. 
The psalmim is in the left hand. And while you're holding the wine in the right and the psalmim in the left, our meaning is that after you say, after you finish the first three brachas, you put the koiz down. The Ram doesn't mention that. And I just want to add that l'chura after the birchas hayayin, we're going to learn that later, that it's ideal to hold the item upon which you're making the bracha in your right hand. So l'chayda, you drank the wine. You made a bracha means you drank the wine. You put the cup down, you pass it to your left hand, to your right hand. It's like now when we make Abdullah, we only hold the wine. But when, you, when you're going to make the bracha on the psalmim, we put the cup down and you hold the psalmim in your right hand. Oh. Now what happens if the source is not coming from an incense burner, what's the advantage that you're holding a keli? Which means that even though you're going to smell something that is very pleasant, but when you place it down, your hand won't be farstunken. It won't be fashmirt. Uh, if you're holding oil, the way it worked was you actually put the oil in your hand. Now, what's wrong with that? There's a, there's, the Gemara says, G'nai le'talmud chacham, G'nai, to go out in public perfumed. Because people are going to be choysh at you. The people that would wear perfume then are people that are trying to attract the opposite gender. So what should you do? Now, there's another din. And Kaven is going to smile in a moment over here because we learned this a lot. It's, first of all, it's important to tip the waiter. The Chazal say that. And the nicest way to tip the waiter, if he's not a Talmud Chachem, is to give him, to smear him with the oil. They used to smear people on their heads. So it's a win-win. You get rid of the shtinkachts by shmir, and he, you give him, a, that's the tip. Go today to Shiloh's and tip the waiter that way. Try that. You'll see what will happen. <laughs> Go tip him by smearing on his head the oil. That's the cheretz. So, so, you're not wasting it. You, you're, you're giving him a kibbutz. However, if the shamash is also a Talmud Chachem, and a Talmud Chachem cannot go on the street, Mavusam, then Tachem so then you can waste it. Because of this, the, 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 the virtue of, for a Talmud Chachem not to go Mavusam Lashuk trumps the, so to say, the ruining or wasting the little bit of oil that's on your hand. Final halacha tezvav. Afal pisha im berchas hamazon sarich hayayin. You don't have to bench over wine. Im berach al yain kim enek shomano. So now, now they didn't have kalim the way we have today. We're wealthy. Normally the kalim were used during the meal. You know that they would dip. In Brazil, they dip the bread in the coffee. That's a normal thing. You have coffee, you dip the bread in the coffee. Then they would dip the bread in the wine. If you use the kais during the meal and you dip bread in it, then to fill it up with wine, then you have to clean it out. This halach is only if the cup was used for food during the meal. You have to wash it and you have to rinse it on the outside. Now, the truth is, every time that ever used a kais in public, he would do that. With a napkin, I remember that. That's an ingen, a minig that a cheretz. But halachically, you only have to do it in Shulchan Aruch. It says if the kais was used and there are pirurim of lechem inside the kais. And then, v'yemalenu ya'in chai. Another nuance. The wine then was very concentrated and it needed to be watered down. But the Rambam says that when you would begin the benching, you would only have the concentrated syrup type of wine. When would you add the water? When you were in the second Barach of Birchas HaMaz. The Kivin Shigil of Birchas HaOretz, then Noisen Lutoichem Atmayim Kedei Sheyehi Arav L'Shesiyam why? Because since the second bracha is acknowledging the gift of the Holy Land, and the more concentrated the wine, the more rich the land is. So the way you praise Eretz Yisrael is by demonstrating, you see, the land is such a land that the grapes produce such a great wine that it's so heavy, you can't even drink it without watering it down. You're being Meshabeach, Fashteis Eretz Yisrael. Ve'ein Mesichin alakoy shel birchas hamazayin. No one... Um, can have any talk. Ella, hakel, shoiskin, everyone has to be quiet. Not only until the end of benching. If you're mevarach alakois, at shetichla birchas hamazayin, u birchas hayayin, and then v'yishtu, and then you should know there's an ingin for everyone to partake of the, of the, of the koishlo bracha, because it brings bracha to them as well. Pedek shemini is all about brachas for foods. When you have a bracha bi, right? That's what it's called. This product, what bracha, that's Pedic Shemini. And we will also have over here, we're going to touch upon precedence. 
when you have two items in front of you, what bracha do you make first? They once brought for the Tzamech Tzedek at the end of a meal, Herz Gidon, they brought him a kompot. What's a kompot? Different fruits, some of them were cut. He looked, he looked, he looked at the kompot and he says, ooh, this is a lambda shakompot. Because you needed to know a lot of halachas. Not only do we make a bracha on dessert, but there was, a, there was probably a melon and there was a fruit and then you have from the Shiva Saminim and then you can have from the Shiva Saminim that's cut. And you have another eggs that's uncut. And you have homach loikas. So they, don't know, he said, he looked at the kompot and he said, oh, you, oh my, it's a lambda shakompot. So Pedic Shemini, we're going to find all of the uh, rules here. There's 16 halachas in Pedic Shemini, beginning with Halacha Aleph. Kol Pedos Ha'ilan. All fruits that grow on tree, the definition of a tree, my friend, is not on a branch. The definition of a tree is, is that when you pluck the fruit off, that same branch will produce new fruit in the next season. That's the definition of a tree. Unlike, just a a banana, which you would call it a tree, the grain call it a tree, it's growing above the ground, but that branch that produced bananas will never produce bananas again. Like vegetables, and when you put a vegetable on the ground, when you took it out, that, you, there, nothing else will be produced over there unless you make a new planting. It happens to be by a banana tree, it replants itself and there's going to be new branches. But however you define Pedro Se'ilan, as the Mishnah speaks about, that Ammam doesn't have to say you begin with Barachat Hashem Alekinim Alech Oilam because we already learned, I think it was yesterday or Shabbos, that Kol Bracha Sheein Ima Sheim Um Malkas is Bechlal Ad Kol Bracha. You have to know these rules. Bracha means Barachat Hashem Alekinim Alech Oilam. Unless it's Simuch Alech Averta. Ula Basoif, Boyd and Afashas Rabbis. Chutz Mechamesh Saminim, Hak Suvam Batreira, what are the Chamesh Saminim? The Heim. They are anovim grapes, limonim, pomegranates, te'enim, figs, zesim, olives, tomatim, and dates. Even though, yeah, you make the same bracha prior, you make the boire priho eights. But baso, if you don't make a boire nefasha, you make a bracha achas, me'en shalosh. Ba'alpeiroi so'aretz, when it comes to fruits that grow from the ground. Now, I don't know exactly what that refers to. Peiroi so'aretz, maybe it meant taka the bananas. Peiroi so'aretz, and vegetables. Two categories. And the same. Strawberry? Those are the berries that grow on the, on the ground? What? Strawberry is what? Okay. Berries? Okay. Blueberry? Okay. Say that. Okay. Good, good. Boire pri adama. Ulo basoif. Boire in fashes rabbis. Says the Ramam. Dvarim she'en gizol in the Think that don't, things that don't grow directly from the ground. Keep going. Basar. Meat, cheese, fish, eggs, water, milk, honey. We're speaking about uh, bees, honey, the, uh, or we'll see, or even uh, honey. V'chayyotze behem. Batchilim avarach shahakol. Ula basoyif bordin afashes rabbis. Another halacha. Hashoyse maim shalei l'ravos tzemoy. If a person is drinking water, not because they're thirsty, but they have to wash something that got stuck in their throat. L'mashol. That water doesn't demand a bracha. Allah base. Taking medicine, a great example. Go, go to a better example. Hasoiche, because it's more common by many people, then you, you don't make a bracha, not prior, not post. Hasoiche, that if a person squeezes fruits, and now you have fruit juice. What bracha do you make on fruit juice? So let's go. With two exceptions. Anovim and Zesim. Why? And the Yayin, it's so chashiv. The product of the fruit is more chashiv than the fruit. There's a standalone bracha of Boirei Pri Ha Gefen. Right? Or Ha Gefen. Ulu Basoif, you make the bracha Achas Me'in Shaloish. Because since it came from the Gefen, and Gefen is one of the Chamesh Saminim. The Allah Shemen, Chevra, do you know this? If you drink oil under certain conditions, the bracha prior is Boirei Pri Ha Eitz. That you make a boy to pray or eats for an olive. That if a person, for example, had a sore throat and he's drinking from the oil and he's adding with it meshulakos, the liquids that that is developed when you cook vegetables in water, the chayotzebehen, because then you want to have the oil that you're getting hanoa from the tam of the oil going down your throat, that's soothing your throat. But if you're drinking oil and you don't have hanoa, it's too heavy to drink oil without mixing it with the meishulakos, or you're drinking oil with meishulakos, but you don't have a throat ache, then you make a shahakal. And the, what, in other words, what determines ha'etz or shahakal? 
whether you're having Hana'a, not from the oil, from the tam of the oil. Sharei loy na'ena betam Hashem. Allah hai gimel. Like when the Persians treat the salad dressing. They should make a ha'it on that, basically. If it's olive oil. Pei de'ah, could be Allah hai gimel. I don't know the Persians that drink the ech resish. Okay. Every shop is by the Kiddush. Okay, Kevin, you're not here to, for a rebuttal over here. Let's go. Allah Gimel. Peter, so Yerakois, fruits and vegetables, that are eaten. If they are eat, if they are eaten raw, if they could be eaten raw now, if you bishla means you cook them. Shlakan means you cook them a lot. Extensive cooking. There's a word for that. You stew them. Then you make a bracha shahakal. In other words, guys, this will be the words, if you remember this. When you are moited, a food from its chashivus, when you downgrade its chashivus, then you're going to make a shahakoma. No, it's something that can be eaten raw. By you cooking it or stewing it, you downgrade it. Now, today we know with nutrients, things that have a lot more nutrients when they're raw. The moment you overcook them, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not as nutritious. Ulo but in the fashis. you make a baked apple, that's how you make a shahakoma? According to the Rambam, yeah. If you downgraded it, well, the Ramam didn't say cook. The Ramam spoke about cooking, cooking, or stewing. I don't know about baking. However, if there are certain vegetables that the way you eat them, their chashivus is by uh, stewing them. Like, for example, cabbage or turnips. Can you eat them raw? You could, but that's not the way they're eaten. So now, fakert, if, listen to this, the Ramam says, the Ramam says, because that's not, that's called, remember that? That's not called derech achilosim. This is not derech achilosim. So you make a shakal. El obasayi veren nefashis. Ve'im bishalom oishlokom. Forget, you're taking kruv. Kruv and lefas are vegetables. So now, mevarech alayim veren nefriyad dama. El obasayi veren nefashis rabbis. Next rule. In halachi gimel. Dvorim shedar kom lehei ochel chayim umivushalom. What about foods that can be eaten sai raw, sai uh, cooked? So, you know, uh, carrots, for example. No matter when, so maybe when it comes to an apple, maybe it's darkoi, maybe that's darachachilosan. Vegetables that normally people will stew. So, so you know what the din is? If you stew them, even if the actual vegetable was removed, all you have now is, let's say, the soup, broth. the broth. You make a bracha on the broth, first of all, they were meant, that's the way people eat them. But now that I'm adding another nuance to that, another qualification. You, you did it for the broth. You did it for the broth. Okay. You know that uh, he writes in the footnote 6 over here that there's a big machlekes amongst the Rishonim that I'm standing alone over here. Tevash tamarim, deitani. Here's the thing. Deitani. So mevarchim alav tchila shahakoil. Because the, 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 this, this follows the rules. In other words, a date is eaten raw. You're squeezing something out of it, like the liquids of all, uh, you know, orange juice. You're going to make a shahakom. Avol tamarim shema achem b'yad. But if you have dates that you crushed with your hands, and you took out its pit, and you turned it into something that resembles a dough, it's not just the juice. The date itself is there, but just in a crushed form. You make a bari prior eights. It's like a date. And since it's from the Shiva Saminim, afterwards you make the Baruch HaMein Shalosh. Halacha Hei. Huh? Igulit, that's a Mamash Igulit Vela. Right? Mishnah in Elam Etziyas. We start this young. Halacha Hei. Hakonim Amisukonim. Guys, this is for Brazilians. Cane sugar. Shesoy Chatin Oisam. That their sap is extracted. U Mevashlin Mimeim. And that sap is cooked. And when the cook... When the cook, when that uh, 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 cools down, it becomes hard. This is mamish, uh, the hard sugar. It looks like salt, but it's very sweet. So the Ramam says like this. On what? On the cane. Some of them claim that you make on this conim. This has, this has to do with how you define Eights and Hadoma, according to the definition that I quoted from the Mishnah, 
there would not be a machlekes. There must be two ways to define what's eitz and what's adama. The chayin amru, and now and the chayin that Ramam has an opinion. The Ramam doesn't side. It's very rare. He brings two opinions. He doesn't say which one he passes like regarding the 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 the, 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 the chayin itself, either her eitz or adama. Now, now begins a new topic. The chayin amru shahamoitz it's oitzim when you when you suck out the juice, you make a by the pri adama. That's what they say. The Ramam argues with this latter point. Va'ani oimer, it's even if you're going to say that you make on the sugar cane proper a boyer pri adama, but if all you're doing is this is mamash common in Brazil, you take it and you and you suck out the juice. It's very sweet. No, she ain't a pri. That the juice that comes out is not called a pri. The ain't mevarchan on the juice only a shahako. And this proof is shaloyia devash elu hakonim this this sweet uh, honey from the canes. Shenishtana al yidei ha'ur, which changes, you, it's something that changes, right? Because they would take it out, they would really take it out, they would cook it and they would make it hard. It should not be greater than the vash tamarim that we just learned. The Ramam says in the beginning of right, Allah Dala Dvash Tamarim, you make a shahakal. Ay, it's coming from the tamar. Tamar is a ha'ats, doesn't matter. But it's a shinoi. This is something that normally undergoes more change. Even though you're, you're sucking it out, you're not cooking it. Since it's something that normally was. You make an argument that dvash. Say that I got it. I hear what you're saying. Okay, a uh, good point. Okay, could be. Go, 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 it shouldn't be godel. The Ramam's point is because you normally would not suck it out. The derech achilasan that the Ramam knew of is that they would extract it and they would cook it. That's for sure connected. You know, it it it, it was normally consumed by making it undergo a change. So since and and for that you make a shahakal. So since this is, that's the darkoi, it should be more the dvash tamarim shulein ishtan al deyaur, even though the dvash tamarim, you don't make any change there, also you make a shahakal. Okay, halach avav, let's go right. Hakoir. What's the koir? So the Ramam says that all of the tops of palm trees, while they're still soft, were edible. So what are you here? Eating up the tree. Oh, hakoir shurei shadekel, shukumoy eight slavan, um, since it's tree and not fruit, that's the key. Now there is no bracha to eat a tree. There's a bracha to eat the pri ha'etz or the pri ha'dama. Since you're eating tree, you make a shahakal. Can't call it a pri. Nothing. Kafra shall sell off. Guys, we learned this in the brachas. It was very common, the caper bushes. And the caper bushes produced different types of parts. All of them were eaten. So he says like this. The kafras, the petals, the petals of the flowers of a caper bush, for that you make a boy pri adama. Makes sense. Let's go with our definition because those petals maybe would, would, would not grow. Oh. But I'm, no, very good. Not because it doesn't grow grain, because it's not called a pri, because it's petals. It's not the eights, but it's not. The berries of the tzlaf, which is, that's, that's considered the pri, and they actually look like, they look like small dates. On that you make the boy the priyoyts. Allah, because that's the eights. In other words, I argue again, that's the Chiddush, that, the, that the, the, the petals grow every year, they regenerate, but they're not a pri. The Ramam is consistent with, the, with this concept. Halach hazayin. Hapilpulin, fresh peppers. Fahazan gevil, and ginger. So what, what, what are they? Now guys, there's a rule, uh, Gidon, that you don't make brachas for spices. So how do you view them? Are they spices or are they, so depends. If they are still moist, then you make a word of priyadama. Because th- now it's considered a vegetable. Avil, yevashim, the moment they're dried out, you don't make a bracha prior and post. Because once they're dried, they're called tavlin. Reishem tavlin ve'en o'echel. Ve'chein o'cholin she'en ru'oyim l'achila. Any food that's not edible. Umashkin she'en ru'oyim l'shesiyah. Now we're going to be speak about foods that are slightly edible. What was considered slightly edible? Again, we're spoiled people. But then look at the Rambam. Bread that became moldy. Today you start seeing some mold on the bread. Please throw it out. Then they were start, they were poor. So there was a point where they still would eat it. Wine, which some film already is, is on top of it. There's a little, there's a little uh, film on top of it. You know what? Or the tafshul Food that is spoiling. 
What are noivlois? Sometimes certain fruits on the tree were beaten up by the sun so much, the sun was on them too much that they became overly sweet and they fell off the tree. They'll never become fully ripe. All of these are foods that if you're very hungry, you'll eat them. And beer. What's beer? Beer is not because it's partially edible or not. Beer is it's a product from grain, but there's no grain in it. Vachoim, it's in vinegar. Vahagoyve and locust. Right? They would eat locust. What bracha do you make on locust? Vahamelach, salt. Vahakemein, upitriyois. Now, kemein and pitriyois, truffles and mushrooms, even though they come off the tree, they're not nourished from the tree. So, in all of the above, for different reasons, you make. Shahakol ni abedvari. The cholam of Acham lefan of shahakol. Here goes the rules. Whenever something demands a shahakol, prior lachren mevarach by the nefashis. Chol aton barach la achrav. Another rule. Anything that demands a barach achren and demands a barach adeshayinam. Halacha nine shemarim. If you have dregs, that means if you have grapes that were already pressed, but there's still some some lachuchiyus left in it, and you wanna you wanna chaparain and use all of it. It was called temid. That was the name of the drink, right? So here's the rule: If just as an example, if you poured on them 75 cc of liquid, and now in the bottom you have 100, which means that there was still enough moisture in these shemarim, and they added a total of a, of a quarter of what you have. Now it's still considered wine. You make a way to priyagefen. Why? If if the percent of the, the that thick wine is less than a fourth, now you make a shahakal I want you to know that in Shulchan Aruch, clearly we don't pass it like this because the grapes today, to begin with, don't produce such concentrated wine. I know that they add water; they don't add that percent. The concept is the same. These quantities was because they're. The wine was a lot more concentrated. If you made a mistake, he's a good dinim. Is it emes or sheker? It's emes. Because the, the peiris came from the tree that came from the adama. Since it's emes, yotzah. But what happens if you make on a peiris adama, you made a beira priya, it's not emes. Then lo yotzah. And therefore, the alkulam, post facto, if you made a bracha shahakoil, that's the emes. The ganze welt. And that's even on pass and even on yayin. If you have a cup of beer, this is a gavaldik aloch. The iker bracha gidon is baruch at Hashem alekeinu melech oilam. Everything else is a detail. That's the bracha. Bracha, you're drawing down the level of ato, which is anoichi. God beyond the name into Shem Havaya, into Elikeinu, into Melachoyim. That's the you're bringing God into the world. You're doing it through a specific action, through eating, through eating that type of food. So what happens if you make a mistake? You know what's the Iker? What did you have in mind when you said the Iker of the Bracha? So for example, you have beer. And when you began the Bracha, you were going to make a Shahakal as the Rambam wrote in Halacha Ches. You make a Shahakal for beer, even though it comes from grains. But when you came to the word shahakal, then you got famished and you said bari priyagefen. You don't repeat it. It's not shayach bari priyagefen. It doesn't matter because the ikar bracha was said okay. V'chein ma'il fun of beiris oritz. And v'hischil abracha amanas to say bari priyadama. And we just said that if you make a bari priyad eats on vegetables lo yatsa. But since when you said the open liner, you had in mind to say the bari priyadama, even though you ended up saying bari priyad eats. It's interesting, Lashon. It doesn't say Yotza. This is also connected with what we learned, the unique Shita Sarambam, that making a bracha, She'en Etzricha, is Mamish taking Shem Hashem Lovatola, and Kenish Bala Sheker. Okay. The Chayin, Amayil Fun of Tafshil Shal Dagon, which we learned before you make a Mezoinus, and Taka, when you, be, when you began, you had a mind to say, Bari Priya Mezoinus. Bari Mina Mezoinus. But the Tov, Omar Hamoitzi, Yotza. Here's the key. The pnei she b'shosh she hiskeres Hashem v'hamalchus shehem iker abracha lo ineskaven ella lebracha haro eloisim. I mean, you then had in mind the right type of bracha and v'hoyel v'loy hoyel be iker abracha toes. The iker abracha didn't have a mistake. Afal pi that you mamish made him a safe b'soifa yotza. Here that Amam writes the words yotza. Good. V'ein marzir noisoi. Wow. Halacha yud beis. Let's get moving. 
If you have a doubt whether you made a bracha or not, you don't make the bracha again. Unlike benching that we said, benching is divrei toiru. Here it's only the rabbanon. Shachach vehichnis oichalon otich bivolei bracha. If you put food in your mouth without making a bracha, let's go by different categories. Im hoyu mashkin. Mashkin means you cannot. If you would spit out the mashkin, you would make it repulsive. Another thing is you can't even put the mashkin to the side of your mouth and talk. Oh, try that. It's going to drool out of your mouth. So the Rambam says boilan umavarach aleim basoy. Who knows what this means? I want to know. I'll tell you. Umavarach aleim basoy means you make only a bracha chreina. People read this. You only make the bracha chreina. But to him, how you pay us, that depends. If it's paid us, that if you'll spit them out of the mouth, will become repulsive, like to some of him. Then, so you don't spit them out, but you move them to the side of your mouth. It's not ideal. The Chazal say, where it says that you mole pit, that my mouth is filled with your praise. Ideal is kol hapeh, should be pony. But here you don't have an option. You can't spit it out. Your time from Elam Hazah, me'ilah that Amam wrote. So here you put it to the side of your mouth, you make a bracha, and then you swallow it. But the im enum namasim, even better, like pulim and afunim, beans or peas, poltan mi piv, spit them out. Make the bracha while your mouth is completely empty, and then vacharkach oichal halacha yud gimel oil for the harbe. Here we go. Precedent, seder. Many foods are in front of you. Im hoi yibir chaseim shavais. That I'm see what we learn in Shulchan Aruch, many, many seifim. It's, it's generalized over here. The Ramam didn't have to write that many words. You have to know how to read what's written and what's in between the lines, and it's the same halachas, but let's go. You have many if the brachas are the same. So the rule is, mevarach halachas mehem. You only have to make a bracha once. All the prayer, all of the boire priho eights demand one boire priho eights. O poiteres hashat. The imein birchaseim shavois. You have different food types, and it's not in the meal. And by the way, the Ramam already wrote, right, concerning fr- uh, fruits, that even if it's in the meal, the Ramam wrote, no matter when it's served, you have to make a bracha rishayna because you snack in it during the day when it's not in the meal. Mevarach al kol achas miyem bracha ruila. And every food type, you have to make its own bracha. Now, which one do you make first? This is the Rambam. The A Z mehem sheyirtsa lahagdem magdem. I want you to know that this means, says the Kesef Mishnah, based on words that Rambam is going to write soon, it means. The one that you favor more. It's not Stam Hefkerveld, pick anyone. The one that you enjoy most should be the one that you're going to pick. That's the But what happens if you, it's individualized. If you don't want one more than the other, if you don't want more than the other, according to the Ramam, if you have a, let's say, a grape and an apple, if you enjoy apples, you make the Ha'itz on the apple. If you don't, you don't have your specified uh, desire, then we go through, if one of them is from the Echel Meshivah Saminim, all of them What happens if you have two from the Shivas Saminim? Again, according to the Ramam, it's simple. If you want either one, you have a date and you have a grape. Which one do you like more? But if you don't like them more, and they're both from Shivas Saminim, now the rule is, And Koydim Bapasuk doesn't mean the way it sounds. We all remember this. Koydim Bapasuk means the trader writes the words edits twice. The one that's closest to the edits. So we'll see that the second edits is Zayis, Shemen, Udvash. So the word Dvash, which is Dvash Tamarim, Tamarim is the second one from edits. So it's going to take, it's the last one in the Pasuk, but it can come before others, as the Ramam explains. Vashiva, Heima, Murim, Apasuk, Zeh, Pasuk, and Ekev, Edits, Chito, Soeira, Vegefen, Uta'eira, Verimoin, Edits, Zeis, Shemen, Udvash. Dvash is Dvash Tamarim. And therefore, Tamarim is before Anovim. Think about it. How was Tamarim before Anavim? I'll tell you why. Because Gefen is the third from Eretz. Right? Eretz, Chita, Soeira, Gefen. Gefen is the third. Dvash, which is Tamarim, is the second. Shatamarim, Shaina, La Eretz, Varavim, Shlishi, La Eretz. Gewaldik. Halachi, Yudalid. Brocha, Achashim, Ein Shaloish. Shalchamishus, Aminim, Shal Pedis, Vishal Yayin. So. What is that me'en shaloish? The Ramam already wrote, we learned Shabbos. In the beginning, we learned the Nusach of the me'en shaloish. The Ramam mentioned now that you make a me'en shaloish for, for the Peter Sa'adat. It's the same bracha. The Allah Geffen is the same bracha. Ela, Sha'ala Peter Su'aymer, you open up by saying, Allah Eitz Val Priyo Eitz. And then you continue the same. Va'al Tunum Sasada, Val Eretz Chem Vechuli. Va'al Ayayin, you open up. Allah Gefen, Allah Priya Gefen. 
but we're reading right now, Gidon, we don't pass in the next line. For both wine and for the unique fruits of the Holy Land, you conclude them equally, Allah Aretz for Allah Peters. We say Allah Aretz for Priya Gefen. But then, that, that's the way that Amman Paskans. But then he writes, he's going to write up another sheet as soon. We don't say Allah Peters, we say Allah Aretz for Peters Seho. Now that Amman writes, some people add, it's interesting, he didn't write it when he wrote it down for the first time, that before, right, we, after the insertion of Shabbos and Yom Tiv, prior to ending, we add, Ki keel toivu Why do we say that? Because if you look at the Nusach of Me'ein Shalish, it's called Me'ein Shalish. There's nothing in there that's Me'ein, the fourth bracha, that came with the Zman Chach Mishnah. But they also added, that's this line, Ki keel toivu it should be a kitzur of the fourth bracha. Shum Me'ein Bracha Revis. And obviously, there has to, you have to explain why didn't the Ramam write this machloikis when he wrote the bracha of Allah He writes it over here. Halacha tezvav. If you drank wine and you ate dates, again from the Shiva Saminim, and you ate minay tafshil, minay minay mazaynas, shalchamish is midagan. So each one demands a bracha me'en shalish. You don't make three me'en shalish. You mix them all together. You combine them together. You say, Baruch atah Hashem alaykeinu malach oilam, ala michi v'alach alkala. First comes for grain. Then, ala gefa al-priya gefen. Then, ala oitz al-priya oitz. Then you continue the same nusach v'altrum v'sasodav v'aletz chem dove v'chulei. And when you conclude, you say, Baruch atah Hashem ala oritz v'ala michi Fa'ala peirois rambam l'shitosoy. At the end, you're not choysim concerning the wine at all. Final halacha tezayim. Don't say that the Me'en Shalish covers the body of the It does not. So, what do you do first? First, you do the Allah Gefen, Al Priya Gefen, Me'en Shalish. And then, for the meat, you make the body of the Very good. What happens if you ate two types of fruits? Not, not the Basar. So the te'enim and anovim demands a me'en shalish. Tapuchim and agasim, they demand a bar of fashis. Chayetzim ahem. So here the Ramam writes, Mevarech b'soif bracha achas me'en shalish. Fihi koilela ses ha'koil. Because since you said al ha'peirois, or al peirois seho, you mentioned peirois. So, so you don't make another bar of fashis. Mepnei shukolom peirois, so eitz v'chein kol chayoyit seboze. That concludes the... Eighth chapter, and now Pedic Chi, a very short Pedic, it only has nine halachas. It's, a, it's about fragrance, it's about psalmim, and also, like we had in the Pedic Ches, not just what brachas do you make with the different uh, nuschois, atze or izbe or mine, but also precedence. Both of them will be addressed in this Pedic. Halacha Aleph. Kesheim she'asur la'adam le'hanes b'maychol o'i b'mashke k'aydim bracha. And going back to the Rambam's opening, it's me'ila, ke'ilu yom oil. You may not have benefit from a pleasant fragrance prior to you reciting a brach. The kates and the varach al reyach toiv. Just make a little correlation. Just like the Ramam writes that b'diyevet, if you set shahak oil on anything, you know, ain machzir noising. There is a general the minei psamim, but that's not lachatchila. Chachila is like this. Im hoyozeh sheyesh different nuschayish lehodeyach or loy hodeyach. If it is an actual tree, based on a branch, or it is min eights, doesn't mean a type of tree. It means it's a product from a tree. Mevarech boirei atzei psamim. God created fragrant trees. Like the hadasa. Like the Very good. That's the bracha you make on it. Im hoyeisev. If it's a herb. Or a min asev, a product that comes from something that grows in the ground, then you make a bracha, boire isbe psamim. That's what the Sfardim do by the bris. Isbe. Many Ashkenazim go there and they make a mistake in the, the pronunciation and the whole kol is correct you. That's the minik. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Thank you. But if it's not a tree or if it's not a herb, then. Keep going. Hamoir, musk. Musk, the Ramam is going to write, is a product from a blood, from some sort of non-kosher animal there in India. Shumin chaya, 
Then mevarech by the pri b'samim. Today we have synthetic uh, perfumes. You also make a body mine b'samim. Body mine b'samim. The more you pri haroy lachila. What happens if it's a new category? It's something that is edible, a fruit like an esrik or an apple, and you're smelling it. So you say. Now, post fact of it, then you're Yotso. Actually, we had today in the first uh, Pedic, right? Today's Pedic Zion, that they would bring, it was a minute, but not only at the end of the meal, that there was a certain type of incense, Kaylee, and they would put fire underneath it, and as that smoke would come up, when do you make the bracha? Only after the cloud of smoke rises up. Even though prior to burning it, it would have some aroma. It's meant to be burnt, then it smells a lot better or a lot stronger. Wait for then. The case at Mevarchim Olav. Now, what bracha do you make? So, again, the Ramam is ideally asking us don't say a mine psamim and I'm covered. It's like I'll make a shahakal and I'm covered. So, it depends what is put in that mukbar. Im then you make a boy, then you make a boy, psalmim. If what's in that mugmer is an asev, is be psalmim. Now we're going to see soon about a mixture. One second. I want you to know that shemen shall afar samoin. Let's go that it's balsam oil. But we read in the Ketoris, Hatsori, that's the Tsori. Hatsori, Hanoit of Ma'atzi Aktof, is shemen shall afar samoin. Vechayoit samoin. So now, interesting, the Ramam didn't include it in Allah Aleph. I don't know why. And it's a continuation. So no, look how many categories. Now we have another category. I'm asking that question because on Mugmar, there's no new bracha from Mugmar. All the point he makes is, look what's in it. But in Allah Aleph, he gave the different types, right? Atzei Psamim, Izbei Psamim, then he gave him Minei Psamim, and then he gave Shana Sanei Achtoi And now we're having another category. Boirei Shemen Arev. God created the pleasant oil. Arev doesn't mean thick, it means Arevus. Aval Shemen Zayis Shekivashoi. If you pressed soaked olives, oi, if you pressed olives or ground olives, oi shutachanoi, acha chazerechoi noidev. Here you don't say Shemen Arev. Here what you do is you make a boire atse psamim. Interesting. Boire atse psamim. Okay, shemen shebismoy kein shemen amishcha. If you put together an oil, the way Moshe Rabbeinu made the shemen amishcha, obviously you're not making a perfect copy. Or chayv cut us for that, but the, the idea was is that they had a whole system. There's a machlek is how they did it, but they would put all different types of herbs. They would soak them first in water, according to one opinion. So therefore, they should not be able to absorb the oil of Moshe Rabbeinu. They needed to have that hin. Anyway, they would put it. They would soak it in oil. Then they would remove those herbs and their fragrance went into the oil. So if you made that type of system, no, it's what you're smelling is only the shaman. But the shaman was already imbued with the fragrance of other products. There, you say, And now let's go to precedence. What happens if they bring in front of you oil and an hadas? What bracha do you make an hadas? What bracha do you make an on shemen, either shemen or dave, right? But we said for 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 oil of for olive oil, you make a body, you make a body atzeip samim. So the shemen, the atzeip samim, is the same bracha. So they have the same bracha. So which what, one? Do you what oil that came from the hadas? No, 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 no. Just the hadas. Just the hadas is atzeip samim. And then I'm in Allah gimel, right? Shemen zayis shekavosh yishotachanoi body atzeip samim. So mevarech al hadas u poiteres hashemen mepnei shabrach haachas l'shneim, which is atzei psamim. So hold on. So if it's the same, why do you take the hadas? They say because that's the answer. I'll tell you why. Because oil was made l'sicha. Oil was primarily balsam oil. You make shemen arev because balsam oil people did not use for sicha. Shemen was either consumed or made as a secondary thing. Hadas is primary to smell. That's why you make the hadas first. Halacha dalid. Hoylofan of boysem. Shu eats. If you have a fragrant spice from a tree and you have another fragrant spice that comes from a herb, 
What did we learn before? One is Atzei Psamim, one is Izbei Psamim. Unlike the mushal of Shemin and Ahadas, here they share different brachas. So, Elam, Mevarach Hazal, the Hazal, the Hazal, No, it's ideally, it's ideal. Don't make a, if you would make a Boyim Minim Psamim, then you would not be allowed to make two brachas. Make each one the right bracha. Which one comes first? So, he didn't say yet. Now, by the way, the Ramam did say in the previous Perek, even when it comes to the Chamesh Saminim, that if you have a preference, you make what you prefer. Chayda, the same thing goes over here. Question is, if it doesn't have a preference, hevi uh, olafan of yayin v'shemen. Yayin is not to smell, so the rule is oiches yayin b'minoi v'shemen b'smoiloi mevarach ala yayin v'shoiseyu. And again, lechayda. Now you put the shemen in your right hand. V'chayda mevarach ala shemen umayriach boy. And as we learned before, after you smell oil, tip the waiter v'tochei b'reisha shamish. But if Shamash Adamat Chacham, so he also has a problem. He loves the tip, but he can't go out on the street. Then you have to never shmir it on the wall. Allah hey. Dabr Shu Safek, if you don't know if it's min or eight, it's min Adama. So you don't know. It's like what many people do with rice because of all of the machlaikas. And so we have a Safek and Allah. So then, uh, you know, one of the solutions will make a shahakal. Here will be, Mavarachalov Bayrib Mine Psamim. Another thing. Baisem Sha'ed Vaiha Raichal Mimine Marbe. The Raichal here is the perfumer. He made a special schmeckach. What did he put in there? It's a big secret. But he mixed many different types. So since it's a mixture, you make boy a mini psalm. Another halach. What happens if you go into as a duty-free perfumery? What do you do if you go into a perfume store? Nichnes lechanus shal boisem, and there he's selling all the types minimarbe. All the in the world are there. Bevar halof. Again, you, it, it, there, there we don't. It's before you had you had, a, you had a hadas and you had oil. These are two products. Here you have um, hundreds of products. Then you make a vitamin of salmon. So you just on being in the store. Go, oh, sure. But there's something called you get habituated to the smell. So he says, Im When you enter the store, you make the brach. Nichnas viyatsa, nichnas viyatsa. Then since you left the store, so you got used to the smell of the street. You appreciate the good fragrance when you walk back in there. I just want to add, if you walk by a perfumer, you make a bracha. He smells. And also coffee takes away, cleans the palate of the shmekach. So if he smells coffee, then he makes another bracha, even though he didn't leave the store. Maybe, just theoretically. A guy's shoshana normally means um, roses, not over here. Vedet means roses. Shoshana is a plant, is a flower called is enamans. Google it, you'll see it. The chilf yamayim is lavender. Guys, these are the basic uh, um, plants that are used to make psamim. For both of them, mevarchem aleim boirei atzei psamim. They're considered trees. Nargis, lilies, shalgina, so then you make a boy atzei psamen, because a gina is properly uh, tended to, and therefore, since it's irrigated, um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, the eights part of it is, is good. So it's an eights. But if it's growing in the wild, since it's not properly irrigated, the whole thing won't last. It's called eight eights, so misukanim. Then you say izbe, because it won't regenerate. It's a, like a one-time thing. Havered roses. Or may havered rose water. Right, the Sfardim love the rose water. Vahalavoina and lavoina, frankincense. Vahamastike, rock roses. Vahayoitzebahem. So the din is, you make a boire atse psamim. You have to appreciate this. In other words, when it began to grow, it was an eitz. Tchilas b'reyase eitz. Halacha zayin. Shloisha mine reyach toiv. There are three categories of items that take give off a good fragrance. Yet, nevertheless, ein mevarchan aleyan. You don't make a brach of elohein chevra halkop. Number one, reyach toiv. She also lelirach boy. It's like a pleasant, but there's an isur that I'm going to go into details in a moment. Number two, the reyach toiv. She also lahav reyach na. It's a good fragrance that was primarily made only to take away a bad fragrance. All of the perfumes in France for the Frenchies, and, and three, I'm just kidding. In other words, uh, deodorant, and uh, three, v'reyach toiv, shaloi nasa l'reyach ba'atzme shalonech It was not made for it to be smelled. We'll see in a moment what we are referring to. Ah, ches, uh, ketzad, ketzad is first clarifying number one. P'somem shalavay dezorah. 
It's made for an Avodah Zorah. It was even worse, used already, Takrevis Avodah Zorah. Or any fragrance that's on an erva. An erva would mean that it's on any, uh, any person that you, other than your wife. A man, a, another woman. Because you're not allowed to smell it. Halacha, uh, uh, now, that's category number one. Makes a lot of sense. It's a good halach. You know, you're going to a... Okay, yeah. Not on her, on her perfume. Okay, good. Halacha two, uh, number two. Psamim shal mesim. The psamim that they put over there in a the morgue before they had the freezers to take away the bad smell. Or psamim of a beis hakisei. Or uh, deodorant. The shemen ha'osi la'avres ha'zuama. Everything was oiled, and they put oil under their arms. Oy gavalt. Eim evarchan aleim. Lefishenas la'avre reyachra. And number three, mugmar, not the mugmar that we learned about before. That mugmar, like, you know, they, they would push it, they would light that keili on fire somewhere, and it would give off a good fragrance. But then there were certain mugmars that were made to perfume clothing. Incense. Incense that was made to be used not to give a good reich in the room, but to give a good reich in clothing or into kalim. You happen to smell it. And the other hand, so you would argue, what happens if you smell just the clothing? And you smell the bounce in the clothing. But the bounce is not on the clothing. It should stay. That may bounce is what my wife puts, some sort of soft or something. That, dryer sheets that give a good smell. So, see here, there's, there, there's no substance anymore once it's in the clothing. So, you don't smell it prior to the clothing because it was not made for itself. You don't, even if you smell the begodim that are perfumed, you don't make a bracha lefisha ain't sham iker boisam ah, eladeach below iker. Since there is no substance in there, nishtahed nishtahin, final Allah chetes, tzvika, you're late, psamim shal mesiba shal goyim. If you go by a Masiba guy, this halacha does not apply today because we're living in the Western world where people, uh, even the people that Kaviyachal are, are uh, religious, are not that religious. But then, in the times of the Rambam, if you went by a Masiba of Goyim, the halach is that Ein Mivarchen Aleim, because the presumption should be that the gathering of Goyim is Lashem Deir And in Shulchan Aruch it says that that's not, it's, we don't do this now. If you left the city and you smell something good, so you have to know, you know, someone made a party there. If Rav of the people are Goyim, based on the rule that Stam Mesibis Goyim Lavoy Dezara Emevarach. If most people that live in the city are Yisra Ayidin, then you make a brach. And finally, if there's a mixture, so the Ramam says, and that's the big topic, you go after the majority, just to bring up the big kasha. The big kasha is, is that one of the three categories that the Ramam gave was Avoy Dezor, and Avoy Dezor doesn't have betel. So the question is, it sounds like from the Rambam that's, that the reyach, maybe because there's no substance now, the Ramam says across the board that there is a concept of betel b'roiv. Uh, so in those days, it wasn't just the Arabs that was happy, probably a lot of the Avoy It was not the Arabs, yeah. The Ramam is quoting the Gemara, yeah.